I greet you all, the church, and also our brethren from Houston, with the peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand in reverence to the Word of God. We are going to open our Bibles. Psalms 102. Hmm. Psalms 102. Let's start on verse number one. Abre para mim, por favor. 102. Salmos 102, verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me. In the day that I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned like a heart. My heart is stricken and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the sound of my groaning, my bones clinging to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. A lie awake. Amen. The church may be seated. Brother, we are going to see in this passage, in this psalm that was written, many scholars cannot give assurance about who wrote. Some say David in the moments of struggles when he had struggles with his son Absalom, might be Daniel, others say Nehemiah, Ezekiah, in the moment that Israel found themselves in a difficult moment in the history. But no matter who wrote, we see that the, the writer was a servant of God because in the difficult moment of his life he knew to whom to run and to whom he should cry. If he was David, let's say, we can understand because the Bible says that David was according, the man according to the heart of God. And he even didn't need to do that. It just needed an order because he was a king. And he had an army behind him. He was famous, important. He had all the resources, all the power. He can resolve that quickly. Daniel. Nehemiah, servant of God, but they went to the prayer to seek for help, for aid. And here we see the description of these verses, what was in their hearts. Why? Because the prayer was not an emotional prayer. It was not a prayer in that they were involved 
emotionally, sentimentally, and they just want someone to load them the shoulder. It was the cry of the soul. This cry or this pleading was made that the heart of God was moved. And in our days, the mankind forgets to turn it to God. The mankind forgets that there is a powerful God, a God that can do anything and everything, and that is about the one word, one look, one move from God in our favor that everything will take place. Everything will happen. The sadness will turn into joy. The disease will turn into healthy condition, life. It's just about when God do something or say something. And the mankind keeps forgetting that, ignoring and voiding the actions of God. The psalmist here says exactly that. In the verse 6 and 7, exactly what happened with the man. The decay of man and the history of the, the mankind. The first two talks about many found themselves in this way, in agony, pain, suffering. The great majority of the mankind, even within the churches, afflicted people, desperate people, people that don't know what the tomorrow will bring to them. But why? Because they rather be proud of themselves, keep the suffering, still live the sorrow and bend to the things of this world than to admit it, the, the sovereignty of God. To understand and to recognize that God is everything, that the love of God is greater than anything, that the grace of God is sufficient. What Jesus did on the cross, it's everything we need. So, if because Jesus died, if I'm a believer, I'm not going to have debt, I'm going to have troubles, sorrows. No, that's not what we're saying. It's, this is not what the Bible assures. But we will understand that in the moments of sorrows, anguishing, suffering, to whom we're going to run and how we're going to be helped. It's just a matter of a man open their hearts and understand the mercy of God, the love of God. The psalmist here talks about his own and his particular suffering. And this cry, this prayer, it's something that comes from the deep of the soul. The, the verse says, I cannot even eat my bread. Have you seen any, anybody that lost the appetite? It was big, big sorrow. It's a great suffering. And the writer here, the author here, in the verse 6 and 7, he compared himself to three species of birds. So the first one, he compared himself to the pelican of the wilderness. Show the image. This is the pelican. Long beak, long feet, so he can carry the fish or the prey. And interesting that the pelican, when you talk about pelican, what, what does it bring to you, the pelican? The water, right? 
because the pelican normally is a aquatic animal. His natural habitat is rivers, lakes, close to the, the shore. So when you're fishing, you're going to see that this animal will be around trying to see if there's any leftover for him. And the psalmist says, I am like a pelican in the wilderness, of the wilderness. Why he used that expression? Because the, the wilderness is not a natural habitat of the pelican. He was not designed to live in a desert, but he was developed to live close to the water. But that's how the psalmist was feeling. It's like someone out of his natural habitat. That's how the psalmist felt. And this is how the man generally feel far from God. It's the man that lost his location, his natural habitat, and his proximity to God. Where? Back to Adam and Eve era when they chose to leave the way and they chose to disobey the voice of God. He says they enter and decide to turn back. So like you, when you go on a road and you on a roundabout and you decide to change, you deviate your destiny. So he changed his fate. Whatever God has made for him, which is the fellowship with the Creator, listen to the voice of God, is to be close to the waters. The pelican close to the water, even a lake or river or sea, he'll have food. Whenever he's sick for food, he'll find it. In the desert, no. He will die hungry. And the heat, the trials, the distance between man and God will lead to spiritual death. When the man, there is a program in eternity for the man. In the paradise, for example, every afternoon, God visits the man, Adam and Eve, until the moment that they decide not to listen to the voice of God. Then they lost the right to be looking to God face to face. And many people are like that today. They know what they need. They know that they need to come, turn back to God, surrender their lives, but the, the pride it's uh, like an embarrassment. Uh, believers are too square. They can do that. They cannot do that, that and that. How are you going to leave? How are going to be watched? How people will see me? After I accept Jesus. But they insist. And this is what the psalmist says. I feel far from God as the pelican in the desert. And any moment, what is sure is the death, the end of life. The next verse, there is another animal here, a bird. It's an owl. Pretty, isn't it? But you know how difficult it is to see an animal like that during the day? I am like an owl of the solitude. His activities, he's a nocturnal bird. That's where he, she, uh, this animal is more active. And it's a solitary animal. It doesn't live in flocks or in group, but it's a solitary animal. When the man 
stay apart from God, loses the fellowship, he feels alone. Are you seeing the decay? Before he was with God, within the blessing, now he lost the position, he lost his location, he's not listening to the voice of God, he lost the direction, all the fellowship, now he feels isolated, isolated from everybody else. And many times the mankind feels this way. So when the man, when the distance from God and enter in this isolation because of the trials and struggles, he loses even more the family and he saw, he sees everything. He sees this happening before his eyes. It's a process that happened day after day, little by little. So the sin causes that to into the man's life. The the Bible use the disease leprosis with the sin. That's the symbolic way from God to to explain sin. In the Old Testament the whoever has leprosy it, it cannot be within the people it needs to abandon the society family and he cannot work and cannot, cannot be close to society he was considered impure and the law says that he cannot be close to anybody whoever encountered them and got close to them would turn into an impure too. So whoever has this disease or this problem will be separated. We're going to put it aside. So the sin causes that. It isolates the man from everybody else. So he's going to be losing the contact with family, friends, and the enemy sees that and that turns even worse. So that's what the psalmist says. Like an owl from the desert, of the desert. Sad, in moment of solitude, nobody understands me, nobody, and I don't understand anybody, nobody can help me. Then he looked for professional help. It makes it even worse because he was led to the line of philosophy or ideology and he goes for a different and worse situation. Professional. Imagine. It takes the man to do things that he don't want to do and things that change you, the way that you live you have rights, isolation, you're going to lose everything. The first thing is the family. Then professional life, maybe he went to school, worked hard, family helped, he was young, so he, he finished the school, but far from God. And then the, 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 dec uh, the decay starts. The psalmist says that he was watching, but I am like a sparrow on the housetop, alone on the housetop. Have you noticed a sparrow? Look, it's a, it's a silly bird. Everywhere you go, they are there. In Brazil, here, Europe, whatever you go, the sparrow lives in group. And it's uh, like a party. If you're in a restaurant, if you're eating, it flies close to your feet, takes the, the leftovers. He lives in group, in a gang, family. But the psalmist talks about a sparrow that lives alone, different than the natural style. 
Sparrows love to make their nets, nests inside the churches because it's a high top inside the underneath the roof. If you make some long and tall house, he likes to hide on top of the house because he don't want to be a prey for the biggest birds or predators. So then that's how he, he hides. But when he is in, 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 in the group, he's eating, he's flying, he's happy. But this one here is feeling alone. Why on the housetop? Because it's the face of man in which he knows that he needs to live in the body. He, lives to, he needs to live in the house of the Father because in the house of the Father he will have protection, the food, the help, the support. So before all the sufferings and pains, I am not like that. But I'm like a, a sparrow alone on the housetop because on the the housetop, he is hidden. But when he makes his life, his nest, on the housetop, there was bigger birds. They like to, to eat small birds, the hawks, the eagles. So when the man is in that phase of his life, First, he departs from God, he isolates himself with the sin, he starts to live depending on the sin, and he used to be in sin. And now, when he needs to survive, and he needs that this, he knows that this, his survival is to surrender for what God has determined for him. And Jesus, when he died on the cross, but he is doesn't surrender, he doesn't understand what God is offering, he turned into a easy prey. And when this happened, he is a target. Certain target to live eternally in the destiny without God. This message is a message that the Lord wants to show us where we should be. You might be going through a difficult situation. They are if someone is able to stretch their hands towards you and to help you because the the resources here in Jesus the blessings here and there is no better place in this world or in in another life that you can be safe and sound than in the father's house there is abundance in the house of the father Only the Holy Spirit. So only God knows what you're going through. Sometimes the wife, the sons, the kids, the family, doctors, they don't understand. But there is a God that always understands your need and your situation. The Lord Jesus is the one that knows everything. Everything we're going through Jesus went through. He knows. He was feeling solitudes. He felt alone. He was abandoned. He was forsaken, rejected by his own. So when he lost his mother from his mother and father, there was a purpose for everything. 
but Jesus always he's always the master the Lord he is the conqueror he is sovereign he was obedient to the father and he knows and he knew his destiny his fate and he emptied himself he made himself man like we we are and he conquered death he conquered sin and he is at the right side of the father interceding for us brethren you here tonight you might not be here you're not here tonight by a coincidence or for your will but it's God's will that you are here tonight today the Lord wants to show you that there is a place a safety place for you to to dwell and this place is in the presence of God amen may the Lord bless us let's listen to a song and you're gonna be in a way that you know if you are, if you want, you're going to talk to the Lord. Lord, my soul, it's anguished. And do you know why the soul of man feels anguished? Because the soul wants to go back to God. And he knows where to go.
I invite the church to stand. When you see a sparrow alone, sad, not being happy with the rest of the friends, notice something is wrong. And today, the sadness, the anguishing that you are feeling, the uncertainty, it might be because you're not in the right place. Because the joy of the Holy Spirit is still not inside you. Because the Church of God, it's always rejoicing. You are sick, you are unemployed, but there is a joy. There is gratitude. There is praise and worship because we know that our Father is taking care of us. Sometimes you go through a difficult day, but your mind uh, soon is the time of the service. I'll pray for the service. This is what satisfies us. This is what makes us to always be in the car house of the Father. This fellowship, this intimacy. We know that when we come here, we're not going before the man, a leader in a place. No. We are having an encounter with the Savior of our souls. My brother, my sister, if you don't feel this joy yet, if you are not making use, of, and if you're not feeling this desire burning inside you, causing you to read the Bible, to fast, to pray, to wake up in the early dawn, and to have a good intimacy with God, you need to turn this table and you need to pray and say, Lord, renew in me this desire. I want to be a servant of a living God. I, do, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be alone. I don't want this pain, this sorrow, this anguishing to consume me. This lack of definition and decisions. We cannot leave here tonight in the same way that we came. If the Lord has brought you here, it's because He wants to renew His commitment with you. He wants to make you remember the moments that you lived in His presence, the moments that you used by Him, the moments that you spoke in tongues before Him, moments that you prayed. This service tonight, the Lord is bringing you back. Open your heart. Lord, I want to feel this joy. The Holy Spirit wants to burn inside you. Ask God to feel this burning feeling. Jesus is at hand. You need to be prepared. This is our prayer. Lord, do not let me miss the oil and the fire in my lamp. Preserve me and work within me through your Holy Spirit. This is something that we only can preach and pray to the Lord so this can happen in your life. And for this to happen in your life, you need to speak with Him. Lord, I would like to be a target of your mercy, your love, your forgiveness. Lord, make me to be assigned with the commitment and to be in the position that pleases you. Amen? Let's sing one more song and let, uh, let's give you some time so we can speak with the Lord and have your prayer. The psalmist prayed to the Lord and God heard his prayer. And all the time,
dos dons eu mostrava a um jovem. Ele veio a youth male came tonight. He has many plans and he is finding difficult to fulfill them. But he came anyways to the house of the Lord. Because the Lord has brought you here. God has provided this moment for you. And the Lord has a word for you. You need to be faithful to what you're living before him. God knows the moment of trials you're going through. And the Lord is conducting you. And you will only be victorious in your plans and projects if you persevere being faithful to Him. Sometimes the youth, lady or man, they baptize themselves and they sometimes they go their own, on their own. Your plans, your projects doesn't belong to you. If you don't put everything, your desires, before the throne of the Lord, and if you don't receive the help of the, from the Lord, you tomorrow you might be a good professional, recognized, but your heart you're going to have an empty place because you're distanced from the Lord. So you're going to have peace in your heart. Money, fame, success in your professional life doesn't take you anywhere. David has all that, but he's sick for the Lord. Nehemiah also. Nehemiah lives in a palace. He had a good, he was established. But the man who feel whole only when he opens his heart to the Lord. The Lord has shown also a lady that is here tonight and she thinks that whatever she made to God, good deeds, when she accepted Jesus, the experience that he, she had on the past, she thinks that it's adding to her eternal life. And just because she accepted Jesus one day, but she stopped in the way, she abandoned the the walking with the Lord and she's thinking that she's still saved just because of an act that she made long ago there's not such a thing in the Bible there's no such a thing like to be saved and and no matter what no matter the way that you live you're gonna be saved no it's something that requires maintenance why you have God in your heart the Holy Spirit you will be able to enter the presence of God. So all the teachings through the Sunday school teaching, we understand that by the Bible, you need to be saved and you need to keep seeking and preserve your salvation. God has determined you to be saved since you're, you've been formed in your mother's womb, but you need to separate from the world, have a sanctification. The Lord has shown also tonight the Lord showed that there is renewing the spiritual life of a man he has been resisting for very long the call of the Lord. Approximately one year. He's been reluctant. The Holy Spirit is testifying, speaking, trying to give him the understanding that without God, he's not going anywhere. And tonight, the Lord is giving him a new opportunity. And the Lord is giving him a deliverance, taking all the thoughts and feelings in his mind that doesn't belong to the kingdom. And tonight the Lord is making a new 
covenant with him. Praise the Lord for that. Now you need to keep living and walking in the presence of the Lord. The Lord has shown also another man. He thinks that f uh, being frequently in the church, he is offering God his time. Looks like he is someone important. He thinks that he's doing a favor to God. I'll go there because God needs me. So, during the praise, during the prayers of the church, uh, the children, we understand that man without God has no value. The value that we have is within what we receive from God. The pro of great value. We don't have any value on us. Today we are here. Tomorrow we cannot be here. And it's something easy. Anything, everything, my a little disease can put, put us down. A virus. Many years ago, put the whole world on his knees. Made a big, big harm. Not only in Brazil, here, no, in the whole world. Look who we are. How fragile. We are nothing. We are nobody. But when we have God, we have everything. The God that we have makes us whole. Just listen and accept what God is offering you. And He's always offering you eternal life. Let's pray, finishing. The children are looking at me and asking if, if this is going to end or not. They start to put their hands on their head, the hands on their heads, and enough is enough. Scratching the head, looking at the teachers. Are we going home or not today? So the teachers are the guilty ones. So let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, we bless your holy name for one more night, one more opportunity in your presence, one more week that we're going to start. And we are finishing another week that has passed. And without doubt, it was a, a week of trials and struggles. Several servants going through infirmities. But we are here tonight, understanding that you will give us victory. You will hold us still. We're going to be standing. And we are facing the next week ahead of us, holding your hands, because the victory is... Get, is is granted by our Savior Jesus Christ. And we as a faithful church, we are more than conquerors. That's why once again, tonight we would like to glorify you. We are nobody. We are nothing without you. If you're not with us, we're not going to leave this place, O oh Lord. We need your help. We are needy of your hand holding us. Receive our gratitude and praise. And give us a victory, victorious week. That's our prayer in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tenders, consolations and gifts of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. If you need a prayer, the pastors, the deacons, and all the workers are at your service. If you want, give a signal or ask someone to give us a signal. We are here to pray for you. So starting t tomorrow, we're going to be praying for the pastors and their families. I ask you to pray nominally to the pastors. Mention our names, our family members' names. Pray for everybody, but 
this month especially pray for us pastors so s mention my name the pastor Sabdo's name the pastor Wayne name the ministry is greater than our lives the ministry is more important than, than our own particular life the family is with us so pray for our families because they are a target sometimes our health and the age comes <laughs> I don't want to go to hell, heaven before anybody but I want to go when everybody goes when Jesus comes but go to heaven before anybody if you want to go in front of me that's okay I, I'm not in a hush in a rush I'm not in a hurry peace of the Lord to you all